Good morning and welcome to Face the State, Connecticut's most watched local political program. I'm Dennis House. Right now, the Electoral College decides who becomes president. That's according to the U.S. Constitution. Four times in history, the Electoral College trumped the will of the voters by electing a president even though the loser had more people voting for him. There is now a move to change this at state capitals all across the country, including ours in Hartford. And here to talk about this for the Republicans is State Representative David Labriola of Naugatuck. And for the Democrats, we have State Representative James Spallone of Essex. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us today. First of all, exactly how is this thing working, this whole measure, this legislation? Who would like sure. to take that? I'll, take, I'll explain okay. the mechanics of it. Uh, essentially, it's an interstate compact. So uh, if enough states uh, join the interstate compact by passing a legislation similar to the one that's pending in Connecticut this year, uh, and the number of states total, the number of electoral votes needed to elect pr the president, uh, then uh, all the states joining the compact uh, will have pledged to have their electoral college members vote for the winner of the national popular vote. So the, the, they'd vote for the person who gets the most votes for president. That person would become president by so, virtue of having those So, of votes. course, the electoral college is protected by the Constitution. That would still exist, correct? It would still exist under this scenario. It would be more of a symbolic, uh, it would be, have more of a symbolic nature than it has now. When did this begin? After 2000? I think it essentially, I, I, if I recall, the movement did begin after 2000, but I think it has merit at any time. Okay, so what's wrong with this bill? <laughs> well, you know, the United States is a nation of sovereign states. We are a republic. If you think of the United States states, the uh, sen U.S. Senate, um, every state has two senators. Even a small state like Connecticut has two senators. And so w the, w under the federal system, if we just went by proportion, uh, of votes, we wouldn't have two senators. So not only is this a bad idea in general, it's particularly bad for Connecticut, a small state like Connecticut. The Electoral College protects small states. And I'm not even talking about the constitutional problems of doing an interstate compact. It's just a bad idea for a small state. So the argument is, though, that, that, that if the Electoral College were essentially neutered, that candidates wouldn't have to go to the electorally rich states to campaign. They could pretty much go anywhere, correct? I, I would argue that in that respect it's good for Connecticut and it's good for, for many states. If you look at the way uh, presidential campaigns work now, uh, about 99% of campaign advertising money in 04 was spent in 17 states. 92% of visits were in 16 states. If every vote counts throughout the entire country, candidates will have the incentive to visit uh, large cities, smaller towns. Uh, they don't bother going to, say, New York uh, in the current era because it will be go, it will go Democratic. They don't bother going to California, often the most populous state, because it was going to go Democratic. Uh, but uh, in a st state of 40 million people, it'll be worth going, even if the state is going to go for the other side. And Connecticut, too, we don't get a heck of a lot of attention from, you know, politicians usually in presidential campaigns because our state is traditionally Democratic. You know, the, uh, so they believe. Do you think this would change us? Well, you know, if you think of the broad sweep of presidential history in 220 years, many times Connecticut has been in play. Even in our lifetimes, many, many, at least half of the elections, Connecticut is very much a swing state. Even this last election, when Sarah Palin was nominated and she had rock star status, it appears though Connecticut was going to be a swing state for a second there. And so, um, what would happen if this measure passed is? the candidates for president would only go to those population centers, would go to the cities, they'd go to New York and Philadelphia and Boston, and while they may, might stop for a second in Bridgeport or Hartford, they would essentially pass Connecticut by. We would be even more irrelevant than we are now, and we're not always irrelevant. Many times, Connecticut is in play. This past uh, election in 2008, we did get some folks at the very last moment. I believe President Obama came here, correct, in the last... Well, certainly for the primary, not for he, the... Uh, he did for the primary. Yeah, and so did Hillary Clinton and John McCain. For the, but, you know, I mean, in terms of the national election, we were, you know, essentially left out. Now, what if Connecticut passes this, but the other states don't? What happens? Uh, nothing would happen. Um, enough states uh, to total 270, which is the number of electoral votes you need to be elected president. There have to be enough states... Uh, that have joined the compact to elect a president for it to become effective. Uh, also, uh, uh, the proponents would likely ask Congress to approve the compact since the Constitution requires congressional approval of compacts, although 
there is some case law indicating that compacts can be approved by silence of the Congress. Um, I think that something of this importance would be placed before Congress for their approval. Do you have support to, pa to pass this among Democrats? Do, yes, I believe that we have the votes in the House and the Senate to pass it. And what's the governor said about it, Representative Labriola? I doubt she's weighed in yet, but I would hope that she would veto it if it passed. Um, you know, you hit before on the fact that this is really coming out of the 2000 election, and I would assert that it's sour grapes from that election. But let's just take 2004. Connecticut went overwhelmingly for John Kerry. And under this proposal, the electors for Connecticut would have had to vote for George Bush, who won the national popular vote. And that is the very essence of being undemocratic. And that's not fair. So is the only fair way maybe to get rid of the Electoral College at all? Or is that, I mean, you know, and just start from scratch, I mean, with a constitutional amendment? Well, I, I, I do think that the most um, appropriate, not appropriate, but I think that the uh, that a, a better way, honestly, would be if Congress were to propose a constitutional amendment to be ratified by the states. Everyone in Congress says they'd like to do that, or many people do, but it never happens. Uh, I think it's possible that if this were to, were to pass or get more momentum, that Congress would act. So I think it has the effect of, of uh, being supportable on its merits. I think it's a good idea. I think it's, uh, the tools are available in the Constitution for us to do it this way. But uh, if there's a lot of momentum, Congress would probably act anyway. Yeah, there are some states that, uh, you know, some supporters of this who say, well, this will increase voter turnout. Places in Massachusetts and Connecticut, a lot of Republicans, well, I'm not going to the polls because my state goes Democratic anyway. What difference does it make? Do you think this would help? I mean, you know, since the first election in 1788, when George Washington was elected, the Electoral College has served our country well. We have the most stable government in the world. No other country is even close. If it ain't broke, there's no reason to fix it. The, the Electoral College particularly protects a small state like Connecticut. And Representative Spallone, you believe it would increase turnout? I think it would increase turnout, and I also think it would help to address, uh, you mentioned at the outset, the four instances in history where there was political instability um, created by uh, the winner of the popular vote losing in the Electoral College or there not being a majority in the Electoral College to elect a president and it being thrown to the House of Representatives where political deals were struck that affected policy in profound ways. What's the timeline from here on in? How does this, you know, where do we go from here? Uh, well, uh, it's on the House calendar here in Connecticut. Uh, it would have to be passed by the House. Simple majority, it's just a regular bill. Uh, then on to the Senate, if uh, it were to become law, uh, we'd uh, join uh, four other states that have uh, made this law. And uh, Washington just passed in both chambers, Washington State and it's on the governor's desk there. Are state Republicans united in their opposition to this? Oh, I think so. There may be a couple who, uh, who support it, but by and large, uh, we're united against it. You get any Democrats to join your side? Oh, I'm sure that there'll be some Democrats that do. And, and for the people out there, you know, weigh in. Let us know. Let your legislator know which, what you think about this idea. That is important to call in and, and obviously take the messages and the emails and so forth. All right, Representative Always. David Labriola from Naugatuck and James Spallone, State Representative from Essex. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, with us gentlemen. We'll keep you posted on the update uh, on the outcome of this uh, vote.